You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with the Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. All that for as little as $5, y'all. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up. Let's go. All right. All right. I nod in understanding. Ah, yeah, any acolyte that can face down a demon as a child must have a pretty sturdy mind. In some places, I have a name. Oh? I am called the Whisperer. A snort, trying to contain a laugh. This is not a joke. <laughs> sorry, no, it's just, um, it sounds like a cheesy nickname. You're enjoying cheese, but you do not eat. No, no, it's just an expression. So, the whisper, I like it, it's kind of cool. Hmm. He gives me a stiff thumbs up. It is cool. I enjoy this name. It reminds me that I am strong, even when I feel I am weak. Why the whisper of all things? After the encounter at Carmine, I would say the word demon to Aya. This was unusual. Before this, I did not speak at all. Wait, that was your first word? For many years, yes. The people of the clans believed I had spoken with this demon. Some feared this. Some admired this. Did you speak to it? I do not know. I simply knew this word, demon, after that day. I frown. You, uh, you said the insold called them angels? They did call them this. Angels and demons. I'm pretty sure those are Zephyr words. This is important. Maybe. They're sort of opposites? I don't know. He growls thoughtfully, but then shakes his head. I have thought about these words many times. It is not good to think about them too much. Quite suddenly, he rises from his perch. Alex, that is enough talking. The water is good. Water? He smirks wickedly, and there's a snap as he unbuckles the strap around his chest. Ha! Huh, really? You're gonna take a dip? Yes. You will join me. I will feel you against me. I fold my arms, bemused as I watch Loken start to strip down. You can't seriously be horny after today. No, I only wish to hold you in these waters. We will not mate until we have returned to the Draconi. Looks a bit cold for a swim. Then I will warm you, little human. Come, the water will relax you. As he tugs off his loincloth, I feel my face flush. Even if he's not planning anything lewd, the view of him remains as tantalizing as ever. Uh, I guess it does look pretty nice. The, the water, that is. A and you. He walks over and cups my jaw, circling his huge paws around my neck. I grin, letting my letting my head fall flat against his fumbling grasp. Hmm, you sure you just don't wanna You sure you sure you don't just want me to get naked again? I do want that. I enjoy the feeling of, I enjoy the feeling of you against me. Alex, undress and enjoy this water with me. It's hard to resist when his subtle paw pads are pressing so wonderfully into my neck and face. He teases my jawline with his thumbs, and one paw tugs at my hoodie. Off. <laughs> okay, okay, let me just... Before I can even get up, he's already tugging my top clean off over my head. I chuckle, sheepishly trying to raise my arms to let him strip me from behind. Man, he really has absolutely no tact. It's completely endearing, honestly. Once Loken has wrenched my top off, I'm struck by the icy blare of the Alalian chill. <laughs> Loken tugs me closer to be enveloped in his arms. Struck by how luxuriously warm he is, even amid such cold air. As I coddle myself into his pelt, he, he arms his arms snake around to my butt, and he slides his paws down to my pants and onto my bare cheeks, squeezing them. I snicker. <laughs> Getting handsy there. Are you sure this isn't about mating? It is not. I only enjoy holding this part of you. He pushes my leggings down, leaving us both exposed to one another. I timidly bury my face into his chest and grin, suddenly aware of where we are suddenly aware of where we are. You sure no one comes this way? You are shy. You're still not used to being naked and out in the open. It is only us here. Come, we must relax. It has been a long day of traveling. Keeping his paws all over me, Loken tugs me over to the water. Wait, slow down! It's cold and I don't have your fur! No, do not do not get in slowly. He continues to pull me in despite my protests. Hang on! Ah! It's like an L, water time. Alright. No, it is better to be fast. When my feet hit the pool, I immediately flinch. It's bitterly cold. Ah, fuck, that's brisk! It's certainly an unpleasant far cry from the hot springs. I lift my feet to protect them from the icy currents, but Loken just hauls me in further. You must move quickly. You will get used to the cold. Wait, no! 
Loken heartlessly smirks as I'm dragged helplessly into the icy pond. He pulls me in waist deep. I jolt, clenching my teeth and clutching onto Loken tightly. Ah, Loken, why? He only chuckles mercilessly at me. See, you are now in the water. You are okay? I grimace, my whole body paralyzed by the shocking temperature drop. I clutch my body to his desperately. Mm, yeah, just, just hoping I won't freeze my dick and balls off. The husky compresses his arms around me and squeezes, smirking and nosing his snout tenderly to my cheek. Humans do not like cold water? Not this cold! Although I have to admit, the temperature is getting more tolerable as the seconds trickle by. The pond water reaches my belly button, and I keep pressing myself keep myself pressed into Loken's heated body. Man, how are you still so warm? All Alalian hounds have thick pelts. We are built for this cold. I hum in agreement, shivering and running my hands up his chest, groping his pecs. The water behind Loken sloshes as his tail wags beneath the surface. His silky fur entwines with my fingers. I feel the dense vibrations of his rumbling, happy growls. He laps his tongue playfully across my cheek, leaving a cold, wet smear. Heh, <laughs> who with your tongue? You are a good human, I blush, and you're a good hound. You are a good acolyte, and you're a good teacher. We gaze at each other for a moment. His paws fumble with my waist as my fingers my fingers leave... What the hell does that mean? Onto, into his pelt. I lean forward, touching my forehead into his chest. He ruffles the back of my head with his paw. Okay, I'll admit, this is nice. I watch him for a moment, this curious hound, this peculiar mentor of mine. Even with all the darkness clouding my mind, he's still so enticing to me. I can't explain where this attraction came from. He's taken good care of me, and I've tried to do the same for him. Despite all that, he's still, he's kind of an enigma to me. As close as we've gotten over the last six days, much of him remains a stranger. What's really going on in that head of his? Hey, why are you helping me? Hmm? It's just, I still don't really get you. Why did you want me as your acolyte? You are the last human. You must determine where you have come from. Yeah, but why do you want that? This is your path. I will help you find out where you have come from. This will help you become a great black runner. Only this, and nothing more. Nothing more? Really? Hmm? I hesitate. I don't want to ruin the moment. It's nothing. Tell me. I smile sweetly at him, fumbling my fingers around his sodden chest for... I just, you know, I find it hard to believe. Explain. You keep saying it. Only this, nothing more. Just focus on the task. You always warn me about digging and digging too deep. But, like, don't you want to know anything? I am confused. This algorithm can tell us a lot more. The Cascade, the Zephyr, the Affliction, Soul Creek? No. That knowledge is dangerous. We are here for you. Only you. I hum uncertainly, continuing to massage his chest. He whines, cupping my chin and tilting my face up to his. You are not believing me? I am. Um, don't take this the wrong way, Loken, but no. At once he scowls. I just groan. Come on, forget it. I don't want to ruin... You think I am dishonest. Explain. I didn't mean that. It's just... I shrug. I don't think people see, see you a great black runner because of all the salvage you collect. Something sets you apart from the others. From what I can tell, you're closer to the Black Zones than most other Black Runners. That's why people look up to you. You've studied them, thought about them, learned about their nature. Hell, you faced down a demon when you were just a kid. You warned me not to dig too deep, but here we are, on our way to Devil's Crag to dig deep. Deeper than ever. He looks my way, growling. He looks away, growling softly. You once asked me if I thought the demons could be stopped. You asked me. Come on, you even had, you even keep a piece, in, a piece of one in your home. Thank you, y'all. Water time. Hmm. You're way more than just a salvage collector. You're a teacher. A protector. You're trying to save people. There's a pause. You want to stop the Black Zones, don't you? He looks away from me. I hug my body to his. His head heading into his soaking... My head... I hug my body to his. Head kneading into his soaking chest. Am I wrong? No. There are things I have wondered. I have wondered since that day at Carmine. I've been chased by demons. I have searched for and saved people who have disappeared into the Black Zones. I have given counsel to chieftains about their nature. I have slain informed who I could not save. This is my path, but I would like to know if the path will ever change. Perhaps one day it will end. Perhaps one day we will be the ones to end it. I thought perhaps this algorithm can help us with this task. This final task. But I am afraid, Alex. 
The black zones are not forgiving to those who drift too close, even us, even us black runners. They will be even less forgiving of those who push back against them. I'm afraid of the consequences this may bring to my clan. We must always tread carefully. I nod, understanding. Giovanni was hoping for the same thing. Change. So was Alira. It's the reason she didn't execute me. Hell, lots of people are like that. The random questions, the obsession with salvage, the way people seem drawn to the black zones. I don't think people want to ignore them, really. Then I come along, a living Zephyr. Who knows what that could mean? It makes sense, it makes sense you'd want me as an acolyte. Alex, this is not the only reason. Oh? I... You... Hmm. What? I wish to know if. I do not know how to say these things. I scratch the side of my side of his head. Despite how tense he seems, he leans into my hand. It's okay. Take your time. You are a Zephyr. Yeah. When I saw you had wit, I was seeing that you were on it. You were honest about this. I wanted you as an acolyte because I. Others say I am strange. They say I talk strange. I hoped the Zephyr would be like me. I hoped you would be different. I hoped you would not find me strange. I hoped you would be like me. Damn it, Loken. Way to tug at my heartstrings. I scratch his muzzle, then tuck it downward so he's facing me. He stares. Loken, hey, you are... You're amazing to me, you know that? Of all the people I've met here, you're the one who isn't strange. You're the most sensible, trusting person in the clan. You don't hide yourself. When you say something, people believe you. I've got nothing left, Loken. Just anger I can't explain. I don't know where to start. I didn't need Dravonia or Taki or the Ottomunks. I needed someone completely themselves. It was you. You're the reason I chose this path, because I trust you. I take his huge paw in my hand, squeezing it between us. They could all learn a lesson by being a bit more like you. Hmm. Alex? Y yeah? He grins happily, leaning down and burying his snout into my hair, placing an affectionate kiss on my head. You are a very strange human. I blush furiously. If I had a tail, I'd be wagging too. And small. A strange, small human. But this is a good thing. He clasps the back of my head, tugging me closer for a tight and wet hug. I wrap my arms around him, turning my head to lean into his embrace and shutting my eyes in bliss. Alex. Yeah? Stay. I'm not going anywhere. When you discover where you have come from, I'll stay with you. You're my friend and mentor. I'm staying. I promise. Hmm. Okay. He nuzzles the top of my head. Kiss? Kiss. He lowers his head down to mine. My lips meet his muzzle, our jaws curling rapturously around each other. I kiss him with rising passion after, as the water sloshes around us. His paws claw at me with fervent need, and our tongues meet between us. He's so good at kissing, so damn good. I lose myself in it. I grind my body against his, basking in him. All his need, his compassion, just him. Thank you, water time. When he parts with me, a pang of disappointment strikes. I rest my head back against his wet chest fur. My chest is thumping. I hear his heart thumping back. I really want to kiss him again. Wow, my heart is really thumping now. It's never beat like that around him before. I feel weird, kind of sad, but good. Um, Logan? Alex? I gulp. I, um, is it getting colder? Mm, the sun will set, will soon set. Come. I will light a... I will light a fire. We must rest here for the night. Yeah. I take a moment to stay, uh, to calm my stirred chest. Probably just the heat of the moment. Only this, and nothing more. Fire is gorgeous. I've been staring at it so long my peripheral vision is darkened. I'm glazed with the radiant heat and the soft crackling sound. Coupled with Loken's enveloping pelt, it's heaven. I'm sitting in his lap, my back to his chest. He's holding me from behind, paws meeting at my belly and head resting neatly atop mine. We're both stripped nude, a blanket shared between us. We've not said anything for a long time. We've just been sitting here. I can hear his slow breathing above me. I'm not sure, I'm not even sure if he's still awake. I look down and fumble with his paws. My fingers probe curiously at the pads beneath his fingers, admiring their contour. Logan doesn't seem to mind. I'm happy to just be held. Very happy. So very happy. That feeling is still there. I don't really know what to, that that he'll know him that well, do I? Yet here I am, sitting and wondering. I do want to know him. Properly. The real Logan. I rise from his lap and spin around to face him. He looks startled. We're almost nose to nose, me tucked snugly on his lap. 
Alex, are you okay? All right, guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.